Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is a really exciting one for me because I finally got my hands on the brand new MacBook Pro 4 inch with the M4 chip. This one. Now, this is not my first MacBook Pro. I've been using them for over a decade. My very first one was a 2014 model. Then I upgraded to the 2016 version with the Touch Bar and the Touch ID, which, to be honest, wasn't the best Apple decisions in my opinion. And now, finally, here we are with the M4 MacBook Pro. This is going to be my main machine for both work and content creation. So, quick disclaimer, before we start unboxing this one, I've actually already opened this box at the shop. Since we don't have an official Apple store here, it's important to check everything before leaving the store. But I still wanted to share the full unboxing experience with you. Inside the box, of course, we have the Micro Pro 4 inch in space black. This color is gorgeous. Apple designed this finish to resist fingerprints, which is a big relief. If you have seen the midnight color on the MacBook Air, you know it's look gorgeous too. It's kind of a dark navy blue close to black. But many users complain to collected fingerprints badly, making it look messy. Luckily, with Space Black on the Pro version, Apple seems to have solved that issue. We also get a 70 watt USB-C power adapter, the MagSafe 3 charging cable, which matches the space black finish. It's a nice touch from Apple, especially with the XDR display being such a fingerprint magnet sometimes. And of course, some paperwork that Apple always includes. Now let's talk about the laptop itself. The design is slightly thicker compared to the Intel era MacBook Pros. And honestly, I'm very happy about that. Because the big change is the ports are finally back. We get an SD card slot again, an HDMI port, a headphone jack, MagSafe 3 and 3 Thunderbolt 4 ports. As someone who uses cameras almost every week, having the SD card reader back is such a relief. Apple removed it during the Touch Bar generation, which was a nightmare. And honestly, it made no sense for professionals. I remember having to carry dongles everywhere, and it wasn't fun at all. Now, let's talk about the specs I got for this model. Apple M4 chip with a 10-core CPU and 10-core GPU plus a 16-core neutral engine. 16 gigabytes of unified memory, which is plenty for my editing and design work. One terabyte SSD storage for all my projects. And of course, the 4-inch Liquid Retina XDR display, which is one of the best laptop screens out there. Bright, color accurate, and perfect for editing photos and videos. Battery life is another huge highlight. Apple climbs up to 24 hours on a single charge, which is insane compared to what we used to get on the Intel models. The good news is that if you still use the all USB-C charging cables, you can actually charge this MacBook with them as well, using one of the Thunderbolt 4 ports that is super convenient when you're traveling. So, what am I going to use this MacBook for? Pretty much everything. I do for work, content creation. I run for the Cut Pro, Apple Motion, Compressor, Lightroom, Photoshop, and Illustrator. On my old Intel MacBook Pro with the Touch Bar, running those apps was a real struggle. Export times were slow, the fans were always loud, and the laptop got hot really quickly. Switching to the M-series MacBooks is a night and day difference. 
With the M4 chip, everything just runs very smoothly. Rendering in Final Cut Pro is much faster. Lightroom edits are insane. And multitasking doesn't slow things down at all. Now let's talk about something that really surprised me. The speakers. I've been using Magma Pro since 2014 and the sound quality has always been good. But this new 4-inch Magma Pro with the M4 chips takes it to the next level. Apple updated the speakers on this model and honestly, they are incredible. Let's play a bit of music here so that you can be one of the judges. Listen to that, the bass is much deeper and richer compared to the old Intel based models I used before. The highs are crisp, the mids are clear, and the whole experience feels almost like having a mini home theater built in into the laptop. It really feels like Apple has pushed this closer to Adobe Atmos style experience. Immersive surround like sound that feels in the room. I do a lot of editing in Final Cut Pro and sometimes design work in Adobe apps and having built-in speakers just means I don't always need to wear headphones when I'm reviewing my projects. This is honestly one of my favorite upgrades. If you've only ever used older MacBooks, especially the Intel ones with the touch bar, you will immediately notice the difference. Before I wrap up, let's quickly talk about how this compares to my older MacBook Pros. The 2014 MacBook Pro was solid, but of course, outdated by today's standards. The 2016 model introduced the touch bar and the touch ID, which I honestly found useless. The touch bar especially looked cool at first, but ended up being more of a gimmick than a real tool and removing the SD card slot during the generation was a huge mistake. This new MacBook Pro fixes all of that. It's thicker but in a good way. It has the SD card reader back, real function keys, and ports that professionals actually need. Add the performance of the M4 chip, and this is hands down to the best MacBook I have ever owned so far. So that's my unboxings and first impressions of the MacBook Pro, the 14 inch with the M4 chip in space black. I'll be using this every day for editing and designing, so I'll share a more in-depth review after a few weeks of use. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and drop a comment below if you're thinking of getting a new MacBook Pro. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.